Previously on the bite. Hi, y'all. Cooking crawfish is easy. Catching them is pretty easy. This is a crawfish net. Wow, look at them crawfish. Wow, look at that big one about to fall off. He fell off. Let's go on to my house and we're going to cook these boogers up. Oh, yeah, y'all. It's ready. Oh, my goodness. Y'all got the mm, crawfish and grits. Ain't nothing like it. Hey, babe. Uh, hey. What are you doing? I'm resting. Uh, did you go to town today and get some stuff to eat? No. Oh, I thought... You didn't tell me to. Oh, crap. Well, it didn't work out what, what I was doing down here, so I guess I'm going to have to come home and figure something out. I thought it was your time to cook. Yes. <laughs> All right, babe. We'll figure something out. I don't know. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, Hi. Lord. I gotta go home and figure something out. I don't know what it is, but I gotta figure something out. Whatever we got, we're gonna have to cook it. All right, I gotta go. Oh man, I ain't got no idea what I'm gonna cook. But I know I gotta cook something. Miss Janet's hungry. Oh, <sighs> <sighs> what we gonna do? What we gonna do? I gotta figure out something. Uh, not that. What is this? I don't know. I don't even know what this is. Carrots. Mm -mm. We don't do that. Ooh, I got an idea. Stove top. Ooh. Definitely. What else? Ooh. I think I got an idea. We're fixing to make some salmon patties, salmon cakes, whatever you want to call them. They are delicious. They like crispy, just nothing but goodness. You can make a sandwich with them. You can eat them straight, however you want them. They're just super good. Uh, you start out with stove top stuffing. Get your stuffing, dump it in here. Don't pay no attention to the labeling on that. That's no good. Don't direction, don't even follow them. Get you some chicken stock. Good chicken stock, okay? Put this in here, just like that. See? That makes the flavor jump 50 times. Stir it in a little bit. Add a little more if you like. That's the way to do it. Now, basically, what we got to do is let this hydrate, but I like to heat it up. So let's get it over here on the um, Blackstone burner and heat it up. All right. Okay, y'all, we're going to heat this up and let it break down a little bit, let it get soft. Might have to add a tad more chicken stock, but the chicken stock just makes it a lot better. Now, this is a 17-inch Blackstone Adventure Ready. This is a great unit to camp with. You can even put your oil right here, heat it up, fry like this. Or you could just cook your patty straight on the griddle. But I like to deep fry. So we're going to deep fry like this. Okay. Stir, stir, stir. All we're doing is letting this hydrate. Then we're going to bring it back over here and mix it up. That should be good. Whew. Next thing we're going to do, y'all, we're going to mix some stuff up here. We're going to dump all this in the pan right here. Smells good enough to eat now. It actually is. With the chicken broth, though, it's a whole new, new deal. It really, the chicken broth really just spices it up. Okay, we're gonna let that sit a minute, smash it around a little bit. And all we're doing is getting the breadcrumbs wet. This is the cornbread kind of stuffing, but any kind of do, any kind of stuffing. Now, first thing we're gonna do, second, third, fourth things. I don't know how many times we're gonna do this, but we're gonna put some eggs in here. We're gonna start with two. 
two chicken eggs. And everybody always thinks I'm funny when I say two chicken eggs, but there's a reason behind that. When I was growing up, we had chickens, ducks, uh, geese, guineas, everything else. So you had to specify what kind of egg you was gonna cook with. Uh, grandma would take duck eggs, that was for the cakes. I think uh, the duck eggs to make a cake with was a lot richer than chicken eggs, and that's the reason they used that. All right, y'all, now we're gonna dump this. Now be careful when you dump this, because this is salmon, canned salmon. And y'all see the bones I pulled off. Now you can't eat them, a lot of people do. Uh, they're crunchy, I like them. Okay, now we're gonna break that up a little bit while I'm in here. Now you can use fresh salmon to do this with, or any other kind of fish. And what you do, you break it, um, you cook your, your salmon before on your griddle. Just on top of the griddle, you cook it down, where to break apart, and once it's broke apart, you smash it up just like this and use it. When I was coming up, we didn't even have salmon. I didn't know what salmon was until I was like 15. When I was young coming up, we would use perch, catfish, whatever kind of fish we had. A lot of times, Grandma would make it with leftover fish. Like we fried fish the night before, she would use that to make the uh, the patties with. And I done put, picked most of the bones out. Mmm. All right, y'all know what I need? I need a little bit of flour. If you make it a little wet sometimes, if you uh, the ingredients is a little wet, a little sloppy, we we'll do put a little flour in it. That should be sufficient. Now all we're gonna do is tighten it up a little bit. Oh yeah, I can see that working already. Hmm, maybe it's a bit more. When you're cooking like this, you just uh, just roll with the punches. If it needs a little tightening up, add a little bit more. If it needs a little juice, add a little more. A little more chicken stock. Oh yeah, we're getting it good now. This kind of cooking, uh, Grandma, I don't know even know if she had a measuring cup. Only time I seen, when I see Grandma pull the measuring cups out of, out of the cupboards or the uh, cabinets, usually we was gonna get a cake. Now, when she was mixing, making cakes and stuff, she had wanted everything right. All right, y'all, let's step over here and see if we can get some of these fried up. Let's we'll go walk over here, y'all. All right, y'all. It's been going a little while now, so we're gonna check our oil. Check on the temperature on it. And we're gonna want this oil to be somewhere between 330 and 350, 360, somewhere around there. Yeah, we are, we're about there. Looking good. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get some flour. We're gonna dump it in this bowl right here. All right, that should be enough. First thing we're gonna do, I like to get about a spoon, about that size. Okay, I rolled it off in the flour, just like that. Shake it around a little bit. Once I shake it, I pick it up with my hands. Then I flatten it out. Then I just ease it off in the oil and let it fry. Get me another spoonful. Knock it off in the oil, in the flour. Roll it around. Pick it up, make my little patty, slide it in the oil. I'm gonna do another one, all right. Another one. Now, we only gonna let them fry a few minutes. Just let them get good and golden brown. Hey right, y'all, I'm just checking these things a little bit because I like mine good and crispy. We're gonna let them sit here just a minute and then we're gonna flip them. Oh, y'all, they're just about ready. So look at here. I've been letting them sit here just for a little few minutes longer just to get them a little crispy. Turn them over. Oh my goodness. And look, they're not perfect. They don't have to be perfect. In a lot of restaurants, you have to bake all things just pretty and all that. Hey, we're gonna eat this. It's a real deal. Mmm. Smells so good. I can't wait. All right, y'all, now it's time to take them out. And just like anything else that you fry, french fries or whatever, as soon as you take them out, they all, oh, that's when you want to add the seasoning. 
you get your back Blackstone Bayou Blend seasoning, and you want to take it and just shake it on here. Why well, it's hot. I like lots of it on mine. Okay, we're ready to eat these. Oh, they smell so delicious. Y'all gonna love these things. You're gonna love them. Watch this. Watch the crispiness. You seen that? Did you see it? You can see crispy. Look. Mmm. The seasoning is so good and the salmon, the um, the crunchiness, it just all comes together with just over top stuffing, blackstone seasoning. Just can't beat this. Mmm. Good, good, good. Yeah, the growing up today is just, is just, uh, I'm glad I grew up when I did, where I did, and how I did. I mean, just little simple things. Walk on the, we get up in the morning, walk out in the yard, and pick up a couple of eggs, and go back inside and cook them. That was breakfast. Grandma had chicken running all over the place. Nowadays, you know, you have to go to a store. Most most people have to go to a store. They they couldn't make it out here. Uh, we go up and down these by just finding whatever we can, clams, uh, oysters out in the lake, picking up soft shell crabs. There's so much to eat down here, but nobody wants to do that anymore. See this right here? Most people don't know what that is. That is wild rice. Now that'll grow up. Once it gets time to harvest it, down this by there be, used to be rice on both sides. Grandma and them would come through here and they would tie a sheet across the boat, okay? They would take one stick and put the, put the rice over the boat like this and then hit it. And see all the little things falling off? When it dries out, all of these little kernels will fall off. Once it fell off, they would take it and put it in five gallon buckets. Bring it back to the camp. On a calm day, they'd put it on the tin roof. It dried a husk off. The husk would fall off, dry up and fall off. Okay, they'd sweep it back up, put it in a five gallon bucket. On a windy day, they'd put it back in the sheet and throw it up in the air. The, the, the husk would blow off with the wind and the rice would fall back down, and that's how we got our rice. It's just, uh, but nobody does that anymore. That's that's over with, you know. Next time I want to buy you, I'm gonna show y'all how to cook French toast with a twist. It's gonna be totally different than you've ever seen. It's good, my kids love it, grandkids love it, I love it. It's gonna be cool, you don't wanna miss this.